Hey, welcome back. <laughs> this is the lecture um, in preparation for the Energy Lab, the lab on basic uh, electricity. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to find out that resistance is futile to these concepts. So, <clears throat> as we, we talked about, just to review quickly, remember energy is the ability to do work. And that power is the rate at which energy is um, produced or consumed. And now we're going to dig into the details of a sp uh, special form of energy, electrical energy, a highly ordered form of energy, able to do many different kinds of work. Um, low temperature heat, for example, which you can make in a wide variety of ways, including just rubbing your hands together, really can't do very much useful work, but e even, if it's, uh, even if there's a lot of it. But electrical energy, even a little bit of it, can run your cell phone, can run motors, generators, lights, car, you know, cars, um, <clears throat> all kinds of things. And so the best way to, <clears throat> I found that the best way to visualize and kind of get an intuitive feel for what electricity is all about is to think about electrical ele electricity flowing in a wire like water flowing in a pipe. And the, um, <clears throat> there are, just like water flowing in a pipe, there's pressure, there's flow, there's a couple different things. With electricity, there's two or three different things that you have to know and understand. And those are voltage, uh, which is measured in units called volts, and it's equivalent to the pressure in a water pipe. And amps, <coughs> which is uh, measured in, in, um, in units called amps, it's also called current, and that equals um, the flow of water in the pipe. So one is the pressure, and one is actually like the water flowing in the pipe. And the power, now the power, which is, again, a rate at which energy is produced or consumed, is the volts times the amps. So the volts times the amps, and it's measured in watts, which is, if you remember from our earlier lectures, is, is a joule per second. Now energy, which is the um, total, a total quantity, is the power times the time, or the um, watts times the hours, or the kilowatts times the hours. It's measured in watt hours or kilowatt hours. So power is voltage times amps, and so you'll get a certain number of watts. Let's say it's 100 watts. And if you um, have that uh, device running at 100 watts for um, three hours, you'll get 300 watt hours of energy, okay? So remember also when our discussion about sources and carriers of energy, electricity is an energy carrier. It can be thought of as a flow of electrons in a wire, although it can take many forms. So here's what, <clears throat> here's what a typical electrical circuit looks like. And I'll point out a couple of um, characteristics of electrical circuits that might not be completely obvious to start off with. So first, we have kind of a source, a voltage source right here. And notice that this, we're talking about DC circuits. It has a polarity, a plus and a minus. So DC electricity, and we're ma mainly going to be concerned about DC electricity in this lab, has a plus and a minus. And we'll show you how to use a meter later um, to um, determine the polarity of any voltage that you need to, that you um, un have under consideration. So out of the positive terminal, you see... Um, <clears throat> an amp current flowing. So there's a voltage, it get, the circuit's hooked up like this, there's current flowing. And then there's a load here, these two light bulbs are, are running. And then there's a switch that you can uh, stop the flow of current and shut these light bulbs off. And so that's a, a typical um, a circuit diagram. We have a source, some kind of a load, some wires that connect it all up, and again there has to be a complete circuit and maybe a switch to shut it off. If this switch wasn't here, if this wire was just uh, straight through this switch, this circuit would just run um, <clears throat> sort of indefinitely until the battery runs out. You wouldn't have any way to shut it off. So um, the, the only way you can shut a circuit off like this is actually to break the wire. And that's what a switch does. A switch is a very simple device. It just breaks the wire. Now let's look at the sort of <clears throat> abstract version of this, which is um, using uh, conventional electrical, this is using kind of pictures so you can really see what's going on. Now this is the same uh, diagram as this, circuit diagram, but it's using um, standard uh, uh, shorthand, standard symbols that are used in electrical circuits. So a voltage is, is shown as a, a long and a short um, uh, line, <laughs> with the long line being positive, the short line being negative. 
A switch is actually shown as a break in a circuit. It's just what it looks like. And then you could close the switch. You could close the switch by pushing this down and, and, the, and the current would flow. The current is typically taken as <coughs> flowing out of the positive terminal. And then we've got a load. In this case, they're showing the load uh, represented as a light bulb with a, uh, a, a circle with a X through it. And <coughs> again, remember we talked about the water analogy where you can think of the pressures. Th this is kind of like a pump. And this is the pressure in the system. What's the voltage? What's the pressure that the pump is putting out? And then um, the current flow is like the water flowing in the pipe. The water flowing in the pipe. And uh, um, <coughs> so... So that's, there's still one uh, aspect of electricity that, that we haven't talked about. Let's, we'll, we'll put that off for a second. We'll talk about resistance in a minute. But right now, we'll, we'll go over again those uh, rates of, uh, those units of energy and power. So remember power, rate of energy production or consumption. It's uh, measured in watts, which is just another name for a joule per second. And it's the volts times the amps. So if you have, <laughs> go back to this picture, if we have 10 volts here, and we have um, 100 amps flowing through here, we'll have 1,000 watts. It will be dissipated by this light bulb. So again, voltage times the current, voltage in volts times the current in amps equals the power. That's just the rate at which energy is being produced or consumed. So what's the total amount of, <coughs> of um, energy that's, uh, that's uh, um, you know, delivered in a given time? Uh, that is the power times the time. So it's watts times hours, power times time. And again, going back to looking at this as a, um, <coughs> we'll look at that, well, well, we'll go forward and look at an example. So here's a um, uh, power. Oh no, let's go back. Excuse me. Let's go back here. And so again, um, let's say we had 12 volts <coughs> and um, 100 amps. That'll be 1200 watts. And if we did that through for three hours, we would have 3,600 uh, watt hours or 3.6 kilowatt hours delivered to that light bulb. So again, uh, <laughs> let's take a look at, um, you know, remember just to remind you that watts are pretty small units. It takes 1,000 of them to run your toaster. So we often think, think in terms of kilowatts or 1,000 watts. So if you have... 3,600 watts, you just divide by 1,000, and it's 3.6 kilowatts. <clears throat> so for energy, <clears throat> excuse me, energy is watts or kilowatts times time. And the because watts are a very small unit, um, most of the time you use, you think in terms of kilowatts or thousands of watts. And that's what you, that's the unit you buy from the power company is a kilowatt hour kilowatt hour and that's about 15 cents and actually you get a lot for 15 cents um, <clears throat> you know, kilowatt hours are very useful so um, it takes about a watt hour like a watt is a small unit a watt hour is a very small unit it takes 50 watt hours to make your toast so that's the amount of time that the toaster's on times the time that the um, of the rate of power which the um, toaster is using and toaster takes about a thousand watts and uh, a typical Utility connected family uses about a thousand kilowatt hours per month of electrical energy, most of which is wasted. <clears throat> and again, if we need to do conversions from electrical energy to thermal energy, we can look at um, one kilowatt hour equals 3,410 BTUs. <clears throat> and then um, one kilowatt would be 3,410 BTUs per hour. So um, there are certain symbols that are used in electrical circuits, and we're really only going to talk about, we already talked about the um, voltage source and a battery and a resistor as a load. And so here, this is a um, resistor, and this is a capacitor, which we, we won't worry about. That's more used in AC circuits and an inductor. And that's basically, you can almost create any kind of electrical device out of these um, circuit elements. So here's a here's a circuit drawn that has all these three elements, and it has a in this case an AC power source, uh, AC voltage source, uh, a resistance, an inductance, and a capacitance. And th these are the the um, uh, I'm not sure why uh, I guess um, 
it's E for voltage because it stands for electromotive force, <coughs> but don't worry about that. But sometimes the word, the letter E is used instead of the letter V for voltage. R for resistance or the Greek letter omega, and L for inductance, and C for capacitance. And again, let's not worry about inductance and capacitance right now. And this is a, a voltage source is, is written as a, a circle with a minus and a plus, <coughs> and a, or a battery with a long line with a plus and a short line with a negative. So another relationship, we talked about the power relationship in, in electricity, which is the voltage times the current equals the power. And there's another relationship, and you just have to kind of memorize these this, this relationship. And that is the relationship between the voltage, the current, and the resistance. These kind of three main things about electricity. And again, if you think of voltage as pressure in the pipe, or in this voltage source is kind of like a pump creating pressure in the circuit, and then the current is like the water flowing through the pipe. The, the R, the resistance, is like friction in the pipe, in, in a way. And it's, it, or, or it represents a load. So um, the, the basic relationship here is that the voltage equals the current times the resistance. That's called Ohm's Law. Voltage equals the current times the resistance. And if we do just a little bit of math on that, like, for example, voltage equals current times resistance, that's the, um, that's the one I always remember. And then, for example, so if I'm given the um, current and resistance, I can find the voltage. But what if I um, know the voltage and the current, and I need to find the resistance? So I just divide both sides by the current. So this, the I's cancel out here, and I'll get V over I equals R. And then doing, an, uh, again, some simple math on it again, if I know the current, it's the, uh, if, if I know the voltage and the resistance, I can find the current <coughs> by dividing the voltage by the resistance. And again, it's just some simple algebra using this V equals IR equation, v voltage equals current times resistance. To get this equation, I just divide both sides by R. The R's cancel out, and I get V over R equals I. Now, that was a lot of complicated, not complicated, but it was a lot of algebra thrown at you at once. And I'm going to show you a um, simple uh, tool that you can use if you can't remember all that. This little um, <clears throat> triangle, sometimes called Ohm's triangle, the way you use it is if you put your thumb, and do that now, put your thumb over the V, you notice you're left with, put your thumb right on the screen over the V, and you notice you're left with an I times an R, and that equals a voltage. Now put your finger or thumb over the I, you notice you, you're left with a V over R. So this kind of does the algebra for you, and if you have this little triangle, you can figure out all these relationships. But it's really, it's really not that hard, and just the one thing to remember, the relationship is voltage equals the current times resistance. So really, just two equations you need to remember. Power equals the voltage times the current, and the voltage in a circuit equals the current times the resistance. Okay? It'll get just a little bit more complicated because we can um, substitute in those two equations. Um, but So I won't worry about, we'll, we'll, we'll worry about that when we get to it. So again, this is just showing that power relationship. Power equals the voltage times the current. It's in watts. And then in this case, the voltage equals the current times the resistance. Uh, series and parallel circuits. <coughs> um, so you can hook resistors up in sort of two ways. You can hook them up in a line where the front of one is hooked to the back of the next, and the front of that one is hooked to the back of the next. And that's called a series connection, where they're hooked up in a line like this. And then the other way you could hook them up is you could take uh, one side of all the resistors and hook it together, and the other side of all the resistors and hook it together. And this is called a parallel circuit. So see the difference? Series and parallel. You notice these are sort of lined up in parallel with each other. And that's important because, um, you know, we don't only hook resistors up this way. We could hook batteries up this way. So, for example... If we have 6-volt batteries and we need to make a 12-volt battery, if we hook batteries up in series, and in this case, we'd, if this was the negative end and this was the positive end, in series, we take the positive end of one battery and hook it, hook it to the negative end of the next battery, and the positive end of this battery to the negative end of this battery. And I may be able to, to draw that out. Let me try that. So if this was a battery and this was the negative end, and this was the positive end, then we would hook up another negative end 
and positive end. Another negative end and positive end. And in this case, if these were each 6 volt batteries, we'd get 6, 12, 18 volts. If we took a voltmeter and measured the voltage between here and here with a voltmeter, we'd get 18 volts. And if we measured, for example, from here to here, we'd get 6. And if we measured from here to here, here to here, we'd get 12. And here to here, we'd get 18. So essentially, voltage, uh, batteries hooked up in series or solar panels hooked up in series, the voltage adds. Okay. Now in this case, if we took batteries and hooked them up this way in parallel so that these ends are all plus, well, these ends are all minus, let's say, minus and minus, and these ends are all plus, Then what would happen here is if we measure from here to here, the voltage will be same and the same as any one battery. But the current of each battery would add. Now let me give you an example here. Um, let's say that each of these was 3 amps, 3 and 3. So we would have uh, 3 amps flowing this way and 3 amps flowing this way and 3 amps flowing here. So coming out of here, we would have a total of 9 amps. Okay, so in, in series, voltages add. In parallel, the current adds. The voltage stays the same, but the current adds. Now, in, in going back to the series um, situation, if we have current flowing here, let's say we have 10 amps flowing here, 10 amps flowing through here. It's going to be 10 amps flowing through all these resistors, flowing through this whole circuit. So in, in uh, um, things that are in series, the current's the same through each element, but the voltage adds across the elements. In parallel, the voltage is the same for each element, but the current adds up at the end. Okay? So, and we will, we'll worry a little bit later about um, the, how you add resistors in, in, in series in parallel. It's not quite as important. So, again, remembering resistance is futile. Um, and this is actually what a resistor looks like. It doesn't actually look like a squiggly line like this. It's like a little electronic component that has a kind of a pl uh, two uh, metal um, connectors that come out, two like metal wires, short metal wires that means them usually maybe half inch long to an inch long. And then it's got a, a plastic body. And on the plastic body, there are color bands. And those color bands are the way you tell what the value of the resistor is. Now you could measure it with a with an amp with a voltmeter. Voltmeter has readings for voltage and current, which we talked about when we hooked up the solar panel in class. But it also has a reading for resistance. And so you can actually read the ohms or the resistance of any um, resistor on it. But you can tell by looking at them by reading this. And the way it's a little bit complex, but it's not too bad. So you, the, the, the first three, on, if you look at it from the left, the first three um, with the bands that are close together, the first three bands are the first, second, and third digit of the, um, of the, of the device. So in this case, you've got a red one, which is 2, and a purple one, which is 7, and a blue one, which is 6. So that's 276. And then the black one is the multiplier. So it could be either times 1, times 10, times 100, times 1,000, times 10,000, times 100,000, times a million or 10 million, depending on. So resistors have really wide ranges. They go from, you know, single digits like 1, 2, 3, all the way up to tens and hundreds of millions of ohms. So they have a really big range. And so <clears throat> this multiplier can actually be less than 1. It can be 0 0.1, 0 0.01. And so, in this case, it would be um, 2, 276 uh, times 1, multiplier 1. So that is 276. 
And then the tolerance here, this tells us how precise this resistor is. And so this is going to be 276 plus or minus 5%. Okay? And again, see if you can figure out what, uh, what some of these are. Whoops, I guess it already tells you. But see if you can look here and figure out what those are based on these color charts. And you can easily look up a color chart on the Internet these days. Probably there's an app you can take a picture of these and it'll tell you what the um, resistance is. And you can look in any electronic device that you have in the inside, um, if it's electronic, not just a, a toaster or something that makes heat, you'll find resistors. It's a very common electrical element. And then there's house wiring, and we'll we'll talk about house wiring um, more in the lab. We'll we'll have a house wiring um, uh, um, uh, demo unit where you can actually wire up outlets and switches and learn how circuit breakers work. But these are the kind of uh, symbols that you would see on a house plan about how the house wiring works. So, in a, you know, you'll have switches, which are S's, and you'll have um, uh, outlets, which are these kind of circles, and you'll have um, all kinds of different things like that. Um, range outlets, which are for 220 for big big electric ranges, that kind of thing. So here's, a, um, <coughs> you know, a, what a typical... Um, house plan might look like with all these various different uh, uh, symbols in it. So remember I showed you that um, this is this is kind of a summary of all of the voltage and current relationships uh, that we talked about earlier and you could kind of tattoo this on your on your uh, uh, back of your hand and you could always have it there you know when you were doing electrical problems but maybe there's less extreme ways of doing this. Uh, learning this as well. So if you're concerned about watts, you've got three different ways of figuring out what watts are. You Remember, watts are the voltage times the current. Remember, E is sometimes used instead of V. So this is the voltage times the current equals the watts. But it's also equal to the current squared times the resistance. And um, I won't get into why that is. It's because um, you can take the two um, relationships, the power relationship in Ohm's law, which is voltage equals current times resistance. And so if we have um, power equals the current, the voltage times the current, but we also know that the voltage is equal to the current times the resistance here, we can substitute, instead of V, we can put in IR. And so we just take this out because E E E equals IR. That's what this is telling us. So if this is equal to this, we can just take this out and put IR in, and we get I squared R. So I squared R is also watts. And if you had a circuit where you only know the current and the resistance, you could still find the power using this formula. And again, you can derive it with just some simple algebra. That may be difficult for some people, but you could look at a chart like this and figure it out. And so if you knew, for example, only the voltage in the current, it's the, the uh, excuse me, the voltage and the resistance, but you didn't know the current, you could still find the wattage because it's the voltage squared times the, divided by the resistance. And again, you get that by taking a look at um, um, the, uh, the Ohm's law equation, I is going to equal E over R, and then substitute E over R in I here, and you'll get E squared over R. So maybe that may be a little tough for some people who haven't had too much algebra, but I'll try to go over that in class a little bit more so that we can have some ex you'll have some exercises uh, in order to do that. But again, the main two equations that you need to remember are the voltage equals the current times the resistance, and that the um, which is um, Ohm's law, and that the power equals the voltage times the current. Okay, that's it for uh, the prep for the lab. Now we'll get, and, and now what we're going to do is learn by doing, by going with the lab next week, and we'll do that in small groups. Thanks.